Okay. Okay, so I'm so excited. Um, you know, I'm not a real abstract person. I kind of like to do things representational. I like to do flowers. I like to do like what we did last week. We did dragonflies. Hey. But um, having something, the abstract is actually really a great way to just free up your creativity. And you really don't have to you think about, oh, you know, I want to finish painting. You know, you can use it for as an exercise. And there's, it's three different, um, there are three different uh, aspects of, of uh, abstract art that make it, make it interesting. And with watercolor, it just applies to watercolor, any kind of, um, any medium. Um, the most important thing is you have, of course, your color, if you're gonna do color. The contrast is really important in an abstract. And a composition, some kind of composition where you think about where you wanna place objects or shapes or whatever. So this is just a fun thing about, you know, we're gonna take our watercolors and we're gonna play with our watercolors. And I'm going to, uh, so what you need, and here's what I've got with me. I've got some art masking fluid. If you have some masking fluid, if you don't, that's okay. Um, some rubber cement, something, uh, masking tape will work as well if you wanna just mask off an area to keep your whites. Um, so like masking tape or the washi tape, yeah, you can tear the masking tape to create a shape in your um, water on your watercolor paper. That's one. And then if you get some water, of course, but I, I've got two containers of water. Of course, one's sort of tinted, and that's because I got a little, um, I got it, uh, I contaminated it, but it's not that dark that it won't um, be a problem. But so clear water, and this one I added some salt to it. I added about a tea, less, about, oh, like a little over a teaspoon of salt, and I let it dissolve. This is just for fun. I'm just trying something different. So we have plain water, put a little table salt in some water and then mix it up in a small amount. You don't need a big amount. And it doesn't matter how what the concentration is. I think more salt, probably the better effect it will be. So salty water, plain clear water. And what else we have? Okay. Um, also just little things that you might wanna make marks with. Like this is something that we all have in our houses usually, right? And um, this is going to make a really, this is what made this mark here. And I just love it. So make something to make marks with. I also found this in my little stash and I thought, oh, that'd be fun to paint on it and make a mark. So we'll see how that looks. Or you can even use like a little, you know, if you have a something that's, you know, like a any shape thing, shape maker. And then I thought it would be fun to try these little fan brushes. If you have anything like this, you know, I have these fan brushes. Um, but if you don't have fan brushes, no worries. Just try different. We're going to try different things. Um, I also have some cling wrap that I'm going to use. So if you have a little bit of a saran wrap in your kitchen, grab that. I'm just going to use maybe about just about this much. So I'm just going to grab, you know, I've got like a little amount of it. And I'm just going to let sit that to the side. And like I mentioned, just anything to make marks in your papers. So what I have today, this one I already did. Um, that's just a quick exercise. It didn't take me long to make that painting. I've got some papers. So I have, I've got my little block of watercolor. It's just uh, Arches watercolor paper. It actually came off the block. So I'm gonna have to use it without the block. And it's an old, it's a very old pad. I've had it probably since the nineties or something. So I've got my little pad and I have some washi tape, which I'm gonna just go ahead and mask it off. And First thing we're going to do is we're going to do we'll put some ma masking fluid onto our uh, paper wherever we want it. We're going to decide kind of make a, our first um, design aspect of this is going to be the white masking tape, the white masking fluid or masking tape. Whatever you've got, if you're going to just use some tape. That's fine. On um, painters tape, anything like that. Um, but I'm going to use the masking fluid because it just, it's fun. I'm going to brush it on and I'm going to tell you a trick or a tip to save your brushes from ruining, being ruined in the masking fluid. Because you know how brushes, this is like a rubbery stuff. There, I've got that now. So I'm just going to go ahead and burnish this side down here. I've got some more uh, paint, uh, some more um, watercolor papers that I've masked off because I might do more than one just to so I've got three, basically, I've masked off three um, surfaces. 
cold press watercolor. These are square, but they can be, you could do a five by seven, whatever you've got. You don't need to, don't worry about the sizes because we're just going to have fun creating abstracts and kind of playing with light and dark composition, color, and contrast. That's all we're doing. We're not thinking about anything else. I put some dish soap on my brushes and that's going to protect the bristles of these brushes. These are cheap brushes anyway. I bought them off I don't know, there was a whole bunch of brushes for really cheap. But I thought that it would be fun to use these brushes to make some shapes with the masking fluid to do that first. And I thought that would be fun to try. I'll do this one first, uh, maybe this one and this one. But I do have the, um, the soap on that so that I can save the brush, hopefully. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of like the other one where I'm just going to brush. I'm going to take this, I'm going to dip it in, and I'm going to just... I can do like a little shape down below. I can do more than one shape. I'm just brushing it on kind of in a, I'm not really trying to make a design necessarily. I'm just kind of creating some white space where I know that my paint, my uh, picture is going to have white. Now I could spatter as well. I could try some spattering. I think that'd be fun. I'm going to spatter a little bit right now with the masking fluid just to get some highlights that I will lose otherwise. So I just spattered some, I don't know if you see that, but there's some masking fluid there. And now that one's this one. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to do it, something different on this one. And same thing. I just wanted to get this masking fluid on, on these papers here before we go to the next thing. So I'm just going to try to not push off my watercolors off the table. So this one I'm going to set aside. Um, hopefully it will be okay. We'll see how what happens when the, if I can wash it. I'm just gonna let it sit it aside and hopefully it will not uh, be ruined. This one is gonna be interesting, putting this brush into this masking fluid and then watching something happen here. Just kind of like that. Just doing this fun little, um, kind of makes this interesting shapes here or like lines. And I'm just gonna do it kind of just trying something different. Kind of crisscrossy um, here. So whatever you have, if you want to just play, just throw some color out. And then, or not color, this is masking fluid. This will just retain the whites. And I'm going to spatter this too to see what happens. Yep, it can spatter. Just a few places. Now let that, I'm going to set that aside. And one more thing I'm going to try um, with my masking fluid. Or if you have masking tape, just tear the masking tape and kind of lay it onto your paper. Just kind of, you know, put it on there. Um, my last but not least is this one. I'll just do a circular. I want to make a circle. Kind of just circles. Maybe just one circle. Or two. Or just concentric circles. Something maybe just like a little, kind of a loose painterly thing happening. I think maybe I'll do it up here too. So basically, I have now got my white areas that I'm going to retain here one more time. I'm just kind of doing it where blindly because it's sort of I don't see what I'm painting really, and that's okay. It's actually, if I turn it over or turn it to the side, I can see it a little bit. I can kind of look at see the shapes going on there, but just kind of put a little like some some shapes down and we'll see how it looks when it's all after painting. And this one, I think it'd be fun to spatter this one too. Because spattering is fun and it's fun to do it with the masking fluid. All right, now those paint brushes, I will hopefully be able to peel off that masking fluid because I did have them soaked up. So my first thing is I now have to decide my colors. Now, I think I can keep them in the cool range for now. Like I think this would be fun to try just using cool colors. So I'm gonna take, I'm not going to use my salt water yet. I'm going to use my clear water. And I'm going to put together some colors. Like, let's say I would like a, this beautiful cerulean blue. I'm just going to make a puddle of color. Of course, I don't know what's in there. I think I was painting earlier, so I have some other blue in there. But that's all right. I'm just going to, I didn't rinse out my brush. So this is not cerulean blue. It's a mixture of who knows what. It's kind of an interesting combination. I'm just going to mix some blues up and maybe a little bit of uh, kind of a phthalo blue. Well, that's not phthalo, that's ultramarine. So just some different blue combinations of blues. 
And then I'll use a turquoise. I think that'd be fun. So I'm going to keep everything on the cool side because my masking tape is kind of on the cool side. And then maybe I'll introduce some yellows. Sort of how my masking tape is actually, or the washi tape is giving me an idea of the colors that I want to use. So just kind of, you know, a few colors. And then I'll use a dark indigo. Once uh, I'll use that as my dark, dark. So now that I've got this thing, I just looks to me like that's dry. So I'm going to do a wash of color. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my salt water with a clear brush. And I'm going to take it into the upper part of this above the um, where my um, what's is that's masking fluid is. So in this section here, I'm just going to use my clear brush. I'm going to dip it into the salt water and I'm going to make a, a wash. I'm just going to, you know, saturate it with some water, salt, salted water. And the, and the reason this, what this does is it actually helps to spread the color more than normal water would. It just reacts and it depends on how much color you have. But now I just dampened it. You can see I've got it damp and not too, not puddly puddly, but pretty damp or wet, but it's not dripping, dripping. It's just wet. And that's the salt water. Now I'm going to clean it out. And, and I'm now I'm going to pick up some color. And I'm just going to drop the color in like this. I'm just dropping it in. And what's going to happen is I'm getting these little, it's spreading much more than my normal color spread. And I'm going to grab some, some different colors here. I'm just going to pop it in. That was turquoise. And you can see it, it just a little more, it spreads out a little bit more than your other uh, colors will, than just without. So I'm just creating these little, little looks like fireworks, bursts of color, just dropping it on. And then what I might do is I'm, I think I would like to just now kind of wash over it, but I wanted to see what salt water does. And the longer I let it dry, the more interesting it get, but I kind of want to cover, I wanted just to do a wash and just kind of gently go over my little blotch, my little blotches, but they're still there. I'm just kind of going over it, but I'm making these little, I've made these little blooms of color and I think they're really beautiful. I'm going to take some indigo, some of my darkest color, and I'm going to bring it right at the edge of my, of my masking fluid, just the darkest color, right at the very, very, Edge. And I'm just kind of letting it, I'm very concentrated, but I'm actually dropping it so that now you can see that also that color is spreading. And that's because of the salt water. It's just like going up, like, looks like trees growing actually out of the horizon. It's crazy. Um, I hope you can see that. It's really spreading. Would never spread like that in my normal, uh, without this color or without the salt. And I noticed that I actually saw someone on YouTube doing that. And I thought, well, it's funny because I've used salt for texture, creating texture, you know, which you would put the salt on after. I'm just putting some more color at the top here. Um, but you, I never thought that you would could dilute the salt, you know, dilute it and make salt water and make a, make something happen. See how it just spread like it just danced all it like it. When it drew up towards the salt water, it was, it's crazy. I'm gonna do this, I'm just putting some more concentrated color at the top. Basically, this is gonna look like a sky without even knowing, because these little white speckles are my, um, that's my masking fluid. So I'm just gonna do keep, you know, I'm just gonna keep adding some color until I think I'm done. But this is the, the first part of this. The rest below, I'll do something with a different color. I'm really loving it. I'm just going to keep doing, um, putting some color down. Let's see what I've got here. I might uh, try to keep the colors more like sky colors. So I am sort of doing something representational, but I just love the um, the way that this paint is spreading around. So here I've got some, I'll just throw, just do a few more little bursts of color, maybe some more right at the top. And I'm going to let that puddle let that dry. Now that needs to just dry. So, so what I can do now is work on the bottom section. And if I think that's too, I think sometimes I overthink it. I want to, you know, keep brushing it, but really let the paint, let the paint dance, let it do its thing. Because really the watercolors have their way. 
Right, I'm just doing that, making it more atmospheric, actually. I see this little blue, it's just too much blue. So I'm just gonna drag my brush through and let it kind of look more atmospheric. And I'll let that, I'll let, leave that alone. I'll stop playing with it. And now I'm gonna do something below. Now I think what I might do is the kind of a green, if it's, you know, might be a landscape, this might be my ground. So I'm gonna pick up some green. Um, and this one is a, remember the green that I'm using. Um, I believe it's Cascade Green. I'm just going to pick it up and I'm going to drag it through. I'm going to have, go ahead, and this is with no salt, so you'll see the difference in how things spread or don't spread. So this is a beautiful green. I'm going to take some of that blue, though, that I had that I already mixed. It's already here, so I'm going to just drop some of that blue into that green. I'm going to bring it really close to the edge of that, but not to it. Now this is going to wipe off whatever's there, you know, whatever the man, wherever the masking fluid is, that is going to um, come off. So I'm just going to drop some color here. And now that indigo, that dark, dark color, I want to bring that right into these areas, really close to the edge of where the light, the light masking fluid is. And that's, in, this is the same color, you know, the same thing, but so you can see it's not spreading nearly as much as this one up here because of the salt water. So I've got this dark edge and it's going to kind of spread a little, but it isn't moving nearly as much. And that's, that was what's, that was the thing I wanted to share with you. I'm putting some more of the indigo right here at the base, just to keep, keep that density, just keep that, you know, really dense and dark. And this is what's going to create that really fun, like contrast. All right, so that is going to be all I can do is let that sit and I might just add a little yellow color like maybe a raw umber. I'm just going to drop some of that in here. Oops, got some raw umber. I'm just going to put some in because I want some yellow or some maybe quinacridone gold if you have that. This quinacridone gold is a gorgeous color that mixes gorgeously any color. It's a, a transparent color. I'm just creating like little marks going across like that dry brushy kind of things that I'm going to leave alone you're just going to let it sit I think I've got I don't know if I have I'm just going to put some color I'm going to stick it right over the masking fluid because I don't know what's going to stick or not what's not going to stick so that needs to sit so while I'm going to let that dry because I it's going to be fun just to take that masking stuff off and rub off the um the, um, you know, get that masking off, fluid off. It's going to be interesting to see. So my next one, which is the one that I had done with kind of the little circles. Here. So this is with the circles. I'm just going to set that aside. Here I've got my circles. And I don't like to waste the paint, but I was going to do something more warm. So I'm going to take some color. I think I'll take some warm colors, whatever they are, like an orange this is, this one is a, I don't remember, but this is a, a, oh boy, I think this is a transparent orange. And I'm just going to create like circles, dry brushing into it. Over the, I'm just doing it over the masking fluid. Just hot, like hot circles. <laughs> right over that. What I was, what I, right over where I did the, there you go, right here. And now I'm going to add some indigo, maybe some yellow. Let's see, quinacridone. Let's do some quinacridone. Oops, there it is. Quinacridone gold. Just going to be hot, kind of around those circles. Like that. And just that. And I'm going to stick that all the way to the edge, all the way. Now I'm just doing this dry brush, a wet brush into dry paper and letting it do its thing. Now I'm going to add a little bit of quinacridone magenta, and I'm just going to pop it right in the center, just like this, and really just kind of loose and sort of painterly. And I'm not going to try, I'm not thinking of anything. I just want it to be fun. Purple, I'm going to do a little purple too. This is dioxazine purple. I need that dark, we're looking for the contrast. So um, I think this, Dioxazine purple can go right in the center of these just to have that contrast that we're looking for. Now I'm gonna leave that alone and let that just sit. I really think that's gonna be fun, especially as I lift up the uh, 
masking fluid. And I could do another layer after this one. So I'm going to let that sit for a minute. And then I'm going to take, I might have to heat these. They're awfully, uh, <laughs> they're awfully wet. Here's this other one, the one I did the little uh, clicks with or whatever they, the little, uh, what are these called? Um, marks that I made with that fan brush. Now I'm going to take some saran wrap. This is something fun to try. I'm going to take the saran wrap. I'm going to stick it right over my, my paper. And I'm going to put some color in the saran wrap. And this one I'll do some aqua, like some turquoise. I'm going to stick it right into the saran wrap. <laughs> just like this. Brush it right onto your saran wrap. And just kind of in the same, you know, whatever your area your painting is, kind of just put it in there, brush it in like that. And then maybe another color, whatever you want to take, like if you want to do a blue or I've got this turquoise color, I could use, I could do something kind of opposite. Um, I really don't know what to do with this one. I think I might do another blue, the cerulean blue. Just kind of putting it in and just dropping it in. And I think I might even take some of the colors I already had in my palette because I don't want to lose, I don't want to waste them. And maybe a little green while I'm at it. Just yellow green. So just putting it in there. <laughs> it seems really crazy, but get lots of color, you know, get, get it nice and um, get lots of color in there. And I'm using a round, a pretty, pretty wet brush. There we go, like that. That's what I, now we're not going to use our brush. We're going to take our, our saran wrap and we're going to flip it over. <laughs> Here we go. And now we're going to use our fingers and we're going to create amazing, amazing. It's a texture you would not be able to make any other way. And you can just move the paint around and my fingers aren't getting wet, but I can push the paint around under the, there we go like that and you can just keep moving it around until you just get it to where you like it and i think that is really interesting that's going to be really cool and i'm just going to take it off and now i have this interesting and of course if i left it to dry then i would have some even more textures but even it did make some textures so that that's just something i wanted you to try and it actually makes to me this looks really like an ocean scene happening so what i'm going to do so I'm going to take some, I'm not sure what color, but I'm just going to wing it and maybe take some, oh, this is like a violet color. Um, I don't know what the, oh, that's more of a brown. Sometimes it's really hard to see these transparent colors, what they are. This is a, some kind of violet, which I think is going to be pretty. I'll put that in. It's kind of a reddish violet. And I'm just going to paint around and maybe not try, I, mean, I may regret this, but <laughs> I may try the indigo. I'm going to just go for the indigo. I think it needs that. It needs to be darker. So I'm just going to go and pop in some indigo. Oops, my indigo just came out. There we go. I'm just going to just pop it in and kind of randomly make just little painterly marks. And you can see I'm not really... I'm just pushing it around there. I kind of think that's fun. And then maybe I can just go through my little shape here and maybe just have only one side be um, like that. And that I'm going to leave alone and wait for that to dry because I can always go back and do things later there, like that. And just kind of have fun with your colors. Like I like the way that violet kind of um, is working, but I didn't like it by itself. So I needed to have that indigo in to help it out. All right, so that is that one. <laughs> we'll see how that's going to look. I think it's going to look fun. Now, if now once these are dry, we do another layer and we can start making marks with things. So let's see where we are at, at this, if we're here yet. Looks like this one still needs a little help. So I'm going to just hit it with the, get the heat a little bit to dry as much as I can. until it's at least not puddly looking until it's almost dry because really you can't remove the the masking fluid until until it's completely dry and there's no you know no color left you've got to you've got to wait for that 
what I could do is I can get a little paper towel or a Kleenex or something if I can find one. There's some Kleenex. And I can just dab off what's kind of too wet. There you go. Now that I'm ready to do, I think I want to do using something like this, like what I did before. I love the little uh, mark that this made. And how I did that was I just took some the indigo or dark color, whatever you've got, or if you want to use white, if you want to do, if you want to use um, this, I'd like to try this. I haven't tried this yet. I have some white acrylic paint that I could use, or um, the white watercolor won't, won't really work, but, or if I wanted to use a marker, a white marker, something, so I can get some paint on this, or I can dip it in, I think I'm going to dip it into some white paint, because I'm just going to try this. I tried it with the dark one before, but I think the white will be fun, so. I don't know we're in a watercolor class, but sometimes you can get some other things. But if you want to just do it with watercolor, what I did with this is I just took, I took the watercolor really concentrated and I just put it onto the side of the roll here and then I pressed it onto the paper to make a mark. So you can do that. I'll show you this one and then I'll do another one in white. So here I'll just do it real quick with the dark, which is what I did on the other one. And I really like the way it looked. And I just want to make it nice and, you know, not much water in this, but just putting the color on the sides of whatever piece of uh, something that you want to make a mark with, just put it on there and then you've just, you've created a stamp of sorts. So I'm going to put it right here and I'm just going to place it down and there I've got this really neat line. I like that. And then my next thing I wanted to try, and that's watercolor. So I think it looks really pretty. Uh, maybe I can put that shape. I think it looks nice, but I think I would like it to be white. Um, I think I could add highlights with a pen later. Maybe that's what I'll do instead of doing it with the paint. Another thing to do, like you could do the same thing with this. I'm not sure I'd want to do it on this, but I'm going to try just for fun. I'm going to use some green, some green paint on this. This is just a piece of a noodle, one of those noodle things. <laughs> I know it came with some packaging, I think. So I'm just going to, I've got some green here. And I'm just going to paint it on directly onto the surface. And it's very textured, which I think is going to make a really interesting um, design there. So I'm just going to put it down right, right here. I'm going to press down. And I've got this amazing texture that I like. And I'm going to press it down again and one more time. So I'm going to do the third one. There we go. So I've got this beautiful texture. I can put some more on. And see, what I've got is this texture I wouldn't have been able to get any other way. Just brushing it on. And I love it because it looks very um, botanical. It looks like it's moss or something, which I think is really cool. So there it is. So that's how you can get more textures that you wouldn't normally get with your uh, watercolors. So that one I like. I'm just going to let that sit again and move that on and try doing something like that with this one, because we've got circles already happening. So I might take this and wipe off the excess green, and I'll put some dark, dark color down. I mean, even black would be like a sumi ink would really be nice, but I'll just, I've got this indigo, which I'm almost out of. I tend to use a lot of that color. And just sort of a paint, it could be a Payne's gray. I could do like a really just a dark color darker the darker and the denser that i can get and i'm just going to play with this and see how this plays out and i'll put it right in the center of these kind of like that Woo! <laughs> it's sort of sponge i pushed it in there and paint was still wet so i didn't get the texture i had on the other one but i think it's going to be fun Ooh! so that's one thing so if you have any like foam anything with texture like this or any, you know, it just makes it fun. I'll put that right there. So I've got those little three elements that are, and I might just do a little bit more, just maybe over here, and one more. See, so one, two, three, four, and then maybe a fifth one. And I'll put that kind of like out here. Yeah, that's fun. See how the texture is really interesting on the, not the wet surface, but the dry. That's fun. I'm going to leave that alone. And I do have the white, um, the white speckles still in there. And what I might do is drag a little 
I've got this, I think I'm going to keep it warm, so I'll drag some, maybe some red through there. Or, and my water is so dark right now. It's like really, it's got more blue in it. Maybe I'll just use some salt water. I'm just going to, I like it like this. I don't really want to mess with it too much, but I might just take maybe uh, some dark here. And maybe put some red in this little spot and let it spread out a little bit. And I'll just let it be for now. Maybe I'll just throw a little color here, a color out there. And maybe some around here. I'm going to let some of that color from that, that indigo spread out too. There, like that. Just, just an experiment and fun with colors. And here's some red. I'm just going to bring that red around that circle and let some of that color come out. I like that. And this, this is some orange. I'll just go ahead and go around that. So there, I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> that one is going to be fun when I un to unveil it. Well, this one is the last but not least on this one is this needs something uh, it's not it just needs something so i like these little um these this is really going to be fun or i could roll i could actually take the side and maybe roll it let's see what happens when i paint it on the side there we go with some oh yeah <laughs> so if you like if you have any pool noodles laying around from summertime Here's, you know, what you can do with it. So I'm just pushing it in and it's creating a beautiful texture. I'm just going to drag it across that there. So I've got that texture happening. And I'll do the same. I'll do it again. I'm going to paint that on there and maybe make it a little, just trying to get some texture across that. And then when I run out, I just paint some more on. Yeah, I like that. Fun stuff. Okay. Now we could add light and other things to our, there we go, just like that. I like it. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> just playing. Color contrast. There's no composition to this one, I'll have to, to admit. But let's just see how these look. So this one is about ready to unveil. Oh, and we have the, don't we have another one? Where did that other one go? Oh no, I've got that one. Okay, I'm going to start to remove the rubber cement. I'm just going to take my finger and just drag it along the paper. And what I'm going to have is a much more nice white surface. Now, this is really important when you're taking off rubber cement or your, your masking fluid is to make sure that it's totally dry. There's no wet paint because then you'll smear your, your um, you'll smear the paint onto your paper. So I'm just dragging it across in the direction of what, the way I painted it. So it's in that, I've got the masking fluid brushed. This was the big wide brush that I had uh, used. And I love now that I've, um, wow. So this is the, how the edge looks. It looks like snow almost, it's crazy. And then I'll just keep pushing that, that stuff off. And I've got this very beautiful bright white focal point basically for the watercolor trying to keep that and after what well, if you have there's actually something that you can buy it's a little rubber it's like a little rubber square that you can use to remove your so you don't take your fingers <laughs> down if you know i just don't know where mine is but it's like a rubber cement pickup it's called and it's made it's perfect for for taking off masking fluid okay so i think i got all that masking fluid off that needs to come off and except i don't have it it's not off this yet so i do have spatters that i, I did so i'm going to take the spatters off so there there's my little spatters which look like little stars i don't know if you can see that but it's they're very beautiful white you can get the same effect though if you just use white over but it's fun to do it with the masking fluid too <laughs> So I've got my little stars going. I've got some down here. I see some masking fluid that needs to come off down here. I'm going to put a little white acrylic paint because I could do it with white watercolor, but I'm too impatient to brush it off. So I'm just going to try this and see if it works. This is a, um, a 
acrylic ink, super opaque white. We'll see if it works. I mean, I could even just draw it right on, I guess, with a brush, but I'm just going to use my little roll here and see how, see what happens. It may be totally, might be a disaster, but we'll see. I've got that. I'm just going to take it right about the place that I had the other one. And I'm popping it, and that's what I wanted. I wanted that white circle. So that's how, and then if I wanted to add more white to it, but I'm going to leave it alone. Um, but this, it gives the shape, you know, I've got a circular shape with this very abstract thing going on. Now I'm going to take off the masking tape and we'll see how this changes everything. So I've got the, I'm, I'm loving it. But the man, once I've got that off, it makes a huge difference. There. So there's a, a painting. Now I can use, if I wanted to come, go back and do some color through this area, I can because I've taken off the masking tape. Uh, or the masking fluid. Of course, I'd have to remask this, but I'm going to sit with this for a little while and just, you know, not not judge it yet. And, and of course, I never want to judge my artwork, but or anybody's artwork. But I'm sit with that, let it sit and marinate for a while in my head. Just like this one, I wasn't sure about it, but then I came back to it and I really liked it. So sometimes it's just good to sit uh, sit it, uh, you know, put it away and see what you how you feel about it later. And this one. This one is going to be crazy. I love the textures going on here. And what I could do is like, if you have something that you want, you know, you're not sure, or just well, you can use it for parts of collages or other, um, you, know, you don't have to just think of this as a painting. It's just an exercise and then you'll have something really interesting textural to work with. I'm just going to dry this because I got lots of water down, let's see. I'll just take off the masks and I'll let it deal with it later. But I'll take off this. You can see how much, how different it looks when you remove that masking tape. I think that's going to be fun. I don't know what to do with it yet, but I'll do something with it. There it is. Looks very, colors I've never, I really don't use very often or combine. I kind of kept them in the same color family. So, you know, that one. So here's my cool, cool painting and then the hot painting next to it or whatever the uh, exercise. <laughs> now, this one is really interesting because it's it's not all the way dry, but I think I can remove some of this. These are the uh, with using the fan brush. This is the I have a lot of uh, marks here that I need to remove. OK. That turned out interesting. So that one I'm going to go ahead and take off the masking or take off the uh, tape on the edge so you can see it. I think that's fun. I like that it, that one a lot. I think I, I know, I have an idea. It's not, it's not just for the painting itself, but it will be used. But there's this one. All right. So that one kind of reminds me of a it's sort of a watery something going on, very ocean spray, so that you can direct, you can actually, you know, if you want to do something kind of realistic, you can use these techniques to make something realistic. But the abstract is good for giving you the eye for the color, contrast, and composition. So I'm going to put these here, and then I'll, I'll have to clean up my table later. But there they are.